In this video, we will use D5 Render to create this animation. The style for this animation is supposed to be a physical model of the project. Now obviously this isn't a real physical model, it's all digital. Um, so we're going to go through the steps of taking this out of SketchUp, importing it into D5, creating the animations, adding the lighting, materials, textures, camera paths, and then finally exporting it um, for this final video. The files used in this video are linked down below if you want to download them and follow along. We're actually using the same project that we used in the previous two videos. There are many ways to set up your model for this sort of animation. For me, I kept mine at full scale. I thought it was a little bit easier when I got into D5 to actually place trees and people and materials when my model was at the true scale. You can see I've added this, this large base that my model is sitting on top of. That's gonna create the illusion that this, this is a physical model sitting on a tabletop. Just like I always do, I wanna stress the level of detail in this model. It's only about three megabytes big. So all my furniture, railings, everything is very simplified, but it is all shown in 3D. The lighter your model, the easier it's gonna to be to edit in D5, especially if you don't have that good of a computer. So the key for this process is how you group and component things in your SketchUp model. You can see I'm, I'm, I have my outliner open on the right, and I'm kind of cycling through some of uh, the different components and groups that I have in this model. To put it simply, D5 can read up to two layers of nested groups or components. So as I go through these, you can see every object that's inside of these larger groups is gonna be the object that is animated inside of D5. So each of these structural members is gonna come in individually as part of that larger group. Same as these little uh, roof battens. They're gonna drop in as individual components and we're gonna be able to apply really cool effects in D5 to them. You can see on the right side of my screen, the out, my outliner is showing all the components that I've created. And each of these components represents a different group of objects that's gonna be animated in D5. I made these components because D5 will read the name of a component when you export it from SketchUp and import it into D5. This is the first time I've used D5, so there might be a better way to do this, but this was the way I was able to keep my process organized and easily animate each of these objects, even though it's pretty complex and there's about 20 different um, layers of animation. It's a bit confusing at first, but once you get it down, it makes a lot of sense. And the fact that D5 can read two layers of nested groups is kind of a game changer and ease of exporting things and creating more complex animations. The other thing I've done is applied a few materials to this model. You can see I kept it very simple. Really, it's just a few different tones of wood, a couple emissive materials, some water, glass. Once we've got our model ready to go, I'm gonna select everything and go to my extensions, D5, and then click export. Make sure that you have two objects selected. That's super important because that's, that's us telling D5 to recognize the second layer of components inside of our larger groups. Open up D5, create a new file, and then import everything we just exported from SketchUp. The first thing I'm gonna do is click on the object window pane on the left side. I'm gonna right click on what we just imported and click sync coordinates. This will move it to the same location that it was in our SketchUp model. Next, what I do is I go up to the camera button in the top right and I turn off the auto exposure. This is gonna make a little bit more consistency in our lighting whenever we add it. And then I made it midnight so that our environment becomes pitch black. Now I'm gonna add a couple rectangular lights. They're gonna act as a studio lighting for our animation. And once again, this is the first time I've done this, but what I found was D5 is very good about letting you customize the parameters of these lights. What I did was I increased the intensity quite a bit. You can see the large numbers I'm, I'm using on the right side of the screen there, but this is gonna create the illusion that even though this model is a full scale 3D model, it's gonna actually feel like it's small on a table with a couple studio lights shooting at it. Next, I just adjusted my field of view so it's a little bit tighter, almost like a true isometric. Next, I added some materials. To make this go faster, I saved a couple, but it's really simple. You can see I have water, glass, three tones of wood, a copper, because I wanted to add some accent to some of the pieces in the model, 
Um, and then kind of a white concrete as the base for my tabletop that the model's sitting on top of. My best recommendation is to find some photos of reference imagery that you find and try and match the tones of your wood and your lighting to that reference image. The next thing I did was add some trees. I'm using some of the low poly trees that are built into D5. I used three different types and then I selected all of them, random, randomly uh, rotated them and randomly sized them. And then I added that uh, wood grain uh, texture to them. Next, we're ready to animate it. So I clicked on my video button in the top right corner and I turned off all the layers of the imported components that we're gonna animate. Now that we're in our video editor, you can see on the top right, you can click template. Then you can choose one of the built-in templates for our animation. Now we need to select the objects that get put onto that individual animation. So I'll unhide that group. In this case, it's a base. And then when I select that group, I can hit done. And now it'll be part of that animation. And what you thought was probably going to be the most complex or hard part of this entire process, D5 has actually made it the easiest. So I'm not going to go into too much detail of all these different properties, but there are so many different ways that you can edit your animation to do it exactly what you want it to with very little effort. Usually I'll try and make things that are grounded, ascend up from the ground. Um, if, if there's a, an array of objects like this structure, I'll typically use the drop template and then I'll have them cascade in order based on their world coordinates. And then it's really just a lot of tweaking. Um, and the more, the more animations you have, obviously the more complex and time consuming this process is gonna be. But I realize if, if you add some extra time to do this, it's gonna really improve how cohesive the final animation is. You'll see, because we were super organized in our SketchUp model, when we're adding these objects to the timeline and to animated templates, it's quite easy because I know exactly the order um, that this thing's gonna be phased in based on how I set up my SketchUp model. My total time spent on this aspect of this process was about an hour, if that gives you any idea. So obviously I'm not gonna show you every single animation that I created because it's a lot of rinse and repeat. If you have a question about a specific animation I did, um, just leave a comment and I'll get into more detail for that. I'm also adding some lights as I add these animations. And thing to know about these lights, they're a lot warmer than the studio lights that I've created for the overall lighting of the project. Once we get to the end of the animation, I'll show you how we can add keyframes to have these lights turn on and off at certain points in the animation. I'm also adding people. Um, I'm just using the, the built-in people in D5 that are low poly. I'm actually giving them kind of a bronzy metallic texture. Just like the people here, I, I wanted to add some fire. D5 has a lot of really cool um, particles. Fire is one of them. I have a couple fires in this project, so I use those and just like the people or any other object in this model, I can actually make that fire be a part of my animation. All you have to do is select that animation you wanna add them to, click on the little button next to objects, select the two fires, and then it's part of that animation. Once I get all my animations, uh, what I'm doing here is adding my emissive materials. I do this last because I found that it slows down the animation a bit and you wanna be as efficient as possible. I don't need to see these emissive lights until the very end anyway. The other thing you can do if, if your model feels like it's running slow is change the display settings from precise to smooth. The next thing we wanna do is start to create our camera movement. For this animation, I'm gonna use one of the built-in templates for camera movement. It's the 360 template. And as you can see, when I click on edit path, you can see that blue, circle is essentially the path that the camera is going to take. And you want your object in the middle of that circle. Obviously the circle's too tight right now. So on the right, we're going to adjust some of these settings to make that circle much wider and zoom out to capture our entire project. I didn't want my camera movement to go all the way around my project. So I cut down the movement degree. So that it was only a piece of that, th that entire circle and only the piece that was on the front facing side of my project. And then really I'm just kind of 
wiggling it around until I get it to be about the right view that I want. Um, I'm using that little viewport in the bottom right hand corner to kind of align it. Once you get your camera path set up, the next thing you gotta do is make sure that your animations are aligned with it. I found myself expanding my timeline window vertically so that I could see as many of the animations as possible to select them and then move them to the left or to the right uh, to make sure that they align perfectly with the camera movement. This part took me a little bit more time than I like to admit. Uh, I think it, my process was a little bit clunky, but I'm sure next time I go to do this, I, I kind of have it down now. The next thing I'm doing here is adding camera movement to zoom out at the end. So I created a new view, basically the view where my, my rotation stops, and then I zoomed out and created a new view. And that kind of creates that effect as, as this, this video ends, it zooms out. I did the same for the beginning. I actually wanted to start zoomed out and then zoom in to kind of give a feel for how this is a physical model sitting on a table. And then, yeah, just, you know, playing back the animation over again, tweaking some of the timings, making sure that it, it looks as close to finish as I can get it. Next, we're gonna add keyframes to these lights. To do this, I go to the very start of the animation, select each individual rectangular light, add a keyframe, and then click the light switch button to turn it off. Now I can go through my animation and pause, select the light that I want to turn at that individual moment, and then add a new keyframe and turn the light switch on. And then I'll just continue through the animation and anywhere I want a light to turn on, I'll pause it, add a keyframe, turn that light switch on. This was a really easy part of the process and I did it within a few minutes. And that's really all there is to this. I'm ready to export this rendering. So what I, I, I did, I just made it a 2K uh, MP4 60 FPS. The render time out of D5 isn't that bad at all. It only took about 20 minutes. The last thing that I'm doing here is I imported my clip from D5 into Photoshop and then I'm adding a camera raw filter to it to create a little bit more contrast and texture on my video. Then we can export it from Photoshop, make sure we have the same settings from D5, and this is our final result. As I mentioned in the video, this is the first time I've used D5, so there might be better ways to do some of these things, but overall I think this is a pretty efficient process and it worked well for me. Because I cut out a lot of the in-between animations, um, if you have a question, just put it in the comments and I'll answer in a little bit more detail. If you want to download these files, go to the link in the description. And that's it. Thanks for watching.